Hey there, Caleb Logic here, and welcome to the show. In this episode, I talk with Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income about our new invention we just launched on Kickstarter called SwitchBot. We recorded this just a few days into the campaign after we had raised about a quarter million dollars on Kickstarter. And in this episode, we talk about what's next for SwitchBot and some of the lessons we've learned working on a product for over a year before launching it and what's next. Let's jump right in. On this episode, I'm joined by Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income. He's a podcaster. He's been podcasting for almost 10 years now. I first listened to your podcast 10 years ago when I was driving to and from my job at Boeing. Uh, crazy to be sitting here with you now that we have an invention on Kickstarter that's raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. Crushing it. You've told your story a lot of times on other podcasts and things like that. I'd love to actually talk about this Kickstarter campaign that we've done together for SwitchPod yeah. and some of the things we've learned already just being a couple days into the launch. Um, but Pat, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. You know, there's a lot of things I already know we would have done differently, mm -hmm. but all things considered, we put a lot of prep work into this, a lot of planning, a little bit of our money, not like a few dollars, but you know, significant amount, but not, not a ton. And uh, it's paying off pretty well right now. Just to update people at where we're at currently, um, just over two and a half days ago, or almost two and a half days ago, we launched a Kickstarter campaign for SwitchPod, for a tripod that we invented together. We developed it with the team over at Prouduct, uh, which is a combination of the words proud and product, Prouduct. And we worked on it for 14, 15 months, I think, in private, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I mean, about six months ago, we shared it publicly for the first time in person to people and on the internet mm -hmm. with our trip to VidCon and made a video about it and showed it to people. But that was after we got, got a patent pending on it. Yes. And it wasn't like we were huddling every single day and talking about this. It was like we would have bursts of moments when we would be really focused on it and then we wouldn't even talk about it or even think about it for the next three to four weeks because things were happening and then there'd be another rush of things to decide and things to do and we'd get a prototype in the mail and we'd come together and we'd be like, oh, this is cool, but this could be improved and then dead time again. It's kind of just a really weird, interesting process. Yeah, I think that was the first time where I've worked on something where it was like, hurry up and wait, because we would get a prototype, we would have a lot of feedback, we'd have a lot of comments to someone uh, on our team, and then they would work on it, or it would have to be made and manufactured and shipped. And so I like saying we worked on it for 14 or 15 months is true, like that was the total amount of time, but we weren't full time on that. I would say until this month, until January 2019, I felt like SwitchBot became my full time thing and definitely it became more of your time too as we got the Kickstarter campaign ready. We did the imagery, the photos, the videos. We filmed stuff together. Then it became like, okay, I'm putting a lot of energy and effort into this, but inventing something, doing a physical product with prototyping just takes a long time, and I'm not used to that with the digital like product world that I've been a part of. Yeah, I remember when I came out with my book. So my book is the only comparable thing that I can compare to what we've just done. The book, Will It Fly?, which took me a year and a half, around the same amount of time. And then it was boom, launch, all systems go, all hands on deck, crazy time. It feels very similar to that. But that was a book. Usually my products are online courses or ebooks or other things that are just much easier and, and much simpler to create and much easier to change and see rapid adjustments with and launch and test and iterate and launch and test and iterate and during that time, you can even start to see money coming in. This whole time during this 15 months, like, oh, we owe another 2,000, we owe another 5,000, we you know, we owe this money, and then it's like, we well, still don't even, off, yeah. like, this might not even work at all. <laughs> yeah, and even now, you know, like, the campaign is at, I don't know, you can read the counter. $227,000. 227000 no, that's not two hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars. Okay, I can't count right now. My main. It's been a long. Two it's been a lot days. of numbers, a lot of updates with the numbers in the campaign, but uh, fundraising one hundred thousand dollars in less than twelve hours and two hundred thousand. Uh, it was like thirty-six hours or yeah, so. Yeah. Um, and just seeing it continue to spread online and people 
voting with their dollars to pre-order this sharing it this thing just sharing it to um having people make videos about it that don't have one yeah they're just like commentating about it uh it's so crazy yeah it's so crazy so knowing that we put a lot of money up front tens of thousands of dollars a lot of time and energy and effort and now that it looks publicly like it's a success we still don't have any money from this thing and we don't know how much we're going to have to keep putting into it to to make it and so that's that's one of the most interesting things about this to me is the unknown of how much is this actually going to cost it, are the productions of all the units that everyone buys are they actually going to go smoothly are we going to ship them okay are we going to be able to not have any major flaws oh in it or, yeah <laughs> i was talking to a friend the other day who has an e-commerce business and he had gotten the products made and they were on a ship coming from another country to the u.s and the stuff got lost at sea there's just like fifty thousand units of something were gone Jeez. <laughs> I, I didn't tell you that before but that kind of stuff can apparently happen yeah and I don't know if there's like insurance or I don't even know how that how that works but I, there's a lot of things that could go wrong so far a lot of things have gone right I'm expecting things to go wrong because I don't want to I, I just don't want to be surprised by it and I, and then I want to assess the situation and move on and hopefully with the success of the Kickstarter pain, campaign we have now we can be better prepared for the next steps, which are the tooling and the manufacturing, the, uh, the, the actual manufacturing of the products and making sure that the ones that come off the line first are actually to our specifications and look good, work great. And then there's shipping and packaging and, um, fulfillment. And, you know, do we put anything in the box and, you know, what's, what color is the foam around the box? I yeah, mean, there's just the so many questions. other things yeah. left. Yeah. And I think people want to know the origin story of SwitchPod and that sort of thing and like where we came up with it. And we definitely went really in depth on that in your pod on your podcast, episode 356 of Smart Passive Income Podcast. So I kind of want to talk a little bit just real time with maybe the week or so leading up to the campaign and then kind of the response and now like how does it affect our mindset of what this could become now that we're, you know, a, a few days after launching. So to me in that first week leading up, um, I mean, I've, I worked every day in January, like every single day. You, I did not you take, were busy. Jen was busy. Yeah. We were every, almost every day taking photos or videos or something like that. And I, I had other stuff like we were filming one of your courses and other YouTube videos and your team was in town for a couple of days and, I had other client stuff that I was working on. So, I mean, it, it was just a hectic month to get everything done. But I think the biggest thing was all this work in private, like doing so much in private with no one knowing what you're doing. Um, and instead of doing that and not posting anything on the internet to build buzz, I feel like this was the first time where I was working on something that I brought people along for the journey a little bit more. Um, because Jen, my wife, was taking behind the scenes photo, or we just had a bunch of photos to share mm -hmm. versus I have a hard time, like when I'm working on something, also documenting that I'm doing it because I feel like it kind of takes me out of what I'm doing and sure. I don't do what I'm doing very well. So even just doing an Instagram story or posting on social media, I just go dark for months sometimes because I'm just working, I'm just doing stuff. But it was fun this time. To, to build buzz and actually show people that we were getting ready for this launch, for this date. And I think people liked that. I think people responded it to it It got them well. super excited. It got them involved and it got them, got them invested in the process. And, you know, that's what people want these days are just the human side of things because we didn't share only good things. We shared like reality, what, ha what was happening. And uh, like on my podcast, we got pretty deep with a lot of numbers and just a lot of the unknowns and, this is something that I think I've learned over time as a blogger who came into the space 10 years ago as somebody who was, I don't want to say I was the first to do it, but I, I was one of the first to start sharing more than what people were used to seeing. Meaning I used to share my income 
and exactly how much money I was making and where it was all coming from. I still do, but now just on specific projects versus just my overall income. But people love to know what's going on and how things are going. Uh, I was also pretty uh, adamant to share a lot of the failures. And I started to notice over time as I was writing and then as I, as I was podcasting that the failures, although they weren't good, <laughs> uh, they were always a huge lesson for everybody following along. And so they kind of start to root for you a little bit more. And I think people across the past 15 months, as soon as we started mentioning that we were working on a project and it was kind of a secret, and then we started to reveal a little bit more and more and more over time, people, people began to root for us. And I think they want us to win, which is like, we got them on our side, which is really cool, which, and I, and I think it helps that we are personal brands as well. You've done a great job on your YouTube channel and uh, myself on Smart Passive Income to not just be like, you know, DIY video guy in SPI, in SPI, but like Pat Flynn and Caleb Logic. And I think people feel like we're their friends. So, you know, I've, I've been getting, and I know you've been getting too, a lot of messages from people just congrats. Like I can't back this, but I'm so stoked for you. And because they're not videographers or they don't care for the product, but it's just so cool to see that kind of support. And I think that could, that, that could only come by sharing the process along the way. And I haven't launched something that's this ubiquitous like i've launched courses for my audience or when i was a part of fizzle and we were trying to help online entrepreneurs and things like that the common person and by common person i just mean like the general public or my friends and family that are outside of this internet bubble that we live in don't get it don't <laughs> understand maybe that like i launch a course or how it actually does yeah. or what I do for a living or filming videos and they never see them. So it's like, I assume he does well or something, but this is the first time where. Does it feel more real to you? Like it's an actual I thing? I think maybe because it's a tangible thing, but it's also something that like someone goes to the page, they get it. We invented something. We like show them how it works or how it's different. And it's just like a cool thing that people get. And the fact that it's been successful leads to people coming out of like the woodwork, I would say, uh, at least on my end of, I had a childhood friend text me this morning that I maybe talked to every few years. Um, and he's like, dude, I saw the campaign, like, congrats. Yeah. I have my wife's, one of my wife's best friends, uh, Jen was a, a maid of honor in her wedding. Um, she bought one and her mom bought one. Like that kind of thing where like, my friends that aren't in this internet bubble or don't make video or don't YouTube, like they're buying them because it's cool or it's unique or they want to support what we're doing. And that's, that's just a cool thing to happen. I think it does help that it is a physical product. As we were going through the, the past 15 months, I was very, very anti-physical product, to be honest. It's like, this is taking way too long. I've already spent so much money. I don't see any return. I don't even know if this is going to work or not. And now that it's launched, obviously I'm thinking otherwise. I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking about version two of the SwitchPod. I'm thinking about other accessories. I'm thinking about other products for different niches. And now my mind's going crazy, but that's sort of the visionary in me and, and, and the entrepreneur. I think it also helped that not just that it's a cool product, but it was solving a problem that I think a lot of people didn't know they actually had. It was kind of a, a small, tiny friction in their life that they didn't realize was such a big pain until we kind of showed them that there was a better way to do something. Because, you know, our product, you know, directly kind of competes in a sense with the Gorillapod from Joby, which is an amazing tripod. It's flex flexible legs with, with ball joints and it allows for maximum customization on your terrain and, and how you shoot. But vloggers once vlogging became popular began to take this thing that wasn't meant for vlogging and turn it into a tool that they could use and it was just the best thing available but it's too there's too much in the hands and it's too difficult to open and then close again so we were like okay we see this problem and you and i put our heads together it's got to be a better way mm -hmm. and then here it is yeah and it's proof that we landed on a better way that people really really want uh, but the the funniest part is like I'm now getting people commenting like finally like I can finally get rid of this stupid gorilla pod and like have something that works and it's like nobody ever like said that they had problems but now they're stepping up and saying that because mm -hmm. there's now a solution 
Yeah, and so I think people are asking us like, oh, like what? How do you like launch a big campaign? And like, how do you do this and that? And it's like, part of me is like, well, you like do stuff for eight to ten years and grow a big audience, like doing something else, and some of them are going to be interested in whatever that thing is. And part of me is like make it just make a good product or like make something that people go, Oh yeah. Or I get it. Or why didn't I think of that? That's yeah. my favorite one. Or something that is a small tweak on something that already exists that people are kind of modifying would be, that's a very specific thing to ours, but mm-hmm. something that is popular does sell well and doesn't do it. It does a lot of things for a lot of people, but there's like a segment of people that use it that it's not perfect for. And that would be, what I would say for this. Yeah. Kind of like like a Dyson vacuum. Like they were already vacuums and they mm-hmm. were doing the job, but Dyson was like, no, let's do this a little bit better. Let's make the 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 ball at the bottom so it kind of Move pivots around, a little bit better. Easier. Yeah. Because that was the problem that everybody was having. It's still a vacuum. Yeah. This is still a tripod. It's just better. <laughs> well, and even then, like going on to future Dyson things, now their vacuums are 100 percent cordless i think and they're yep. lighter weight because vacuums are always like really heavy mm-hmm. and so and they have fans now yeah and they even have the hand dryers in the bathrooms at the mall so they're using their technologies to make new things right and so i think that comes down to you and i do a lot of things to like run our business and one of them was wanting to film ourselves or being around people that film themselves and seeing a frustration and that's kind of where it came from. And so I think my advice to other people that are trying to make a product or just even run their business is, is solve, solve problems, fix things for people, mm-hmm. help them with things. That's what people are willing to pay for. They're willing to make their life easier or more convenient, more convenient or less frustrating, yeah. make do something faster. Or that's why we just ordered food because we're like doing something. We're going to pay somebody to bring us food so that when we're done recording, we can eat. And that's our current problem. And that is a friction that we're trying to <laughs> smooth out. Yeah. And so like that kind of thing is is how is how you make money. Like yeah. I, think- I can't clean my teeth very well. I pay a dentist. I you know, it's like those kinds of mm-hmm. problems and things you need help with. I think a lot of it comes down to saving people time. You know, a lot of these things, it, the commonality is time, right? And and you think about the app Uber. A lot of people go, "Well, Uber that just that's get that brings a car right to you." But in reality, you're just saving time. DoorDash or Uber Eats. We used Uber Eats, not sponsored. But. Okay, yeah. Uh, same thing. You're saving time, and we built the tripod that you uh, are all hearing about now, the SwitchPod, to save people time. And I think that if you can help save people time, that's a great place to start. So. The biggest thing is to have conversations with people and see where they're spending most of their time and then consider, well, hmm, can that be done a different way? Or can you learn that faster? Hence, information products. Um, This just doesn't always have to be physical products. That's true. Yeah. Thinking about online courses in particular, like what I've learned about Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro 10 that I have courses on. I learned that from scouring the internet or putting in a lot of time to click all the buttons and figure it out. And so what someone really wants from that course is I could learn this, but please make it faster. Like I want to learn this faster. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, speed is like a big thing. Like we could go get food like we do sometimes. Like I don't always get food delivered (laughs) to me. Like sometimes I go get it and I make it. Usually Jen facilitates dinner the food but this is a speed thing right now like we're trying to do some stuff we're trying to film this podcast we're trying to do other launch related things and it's a speed thing Mm -hmm. so yeah thinking through that was the main frustration with the product we were trying to compete against or like that people were currently using and we were trying to make a new version for them. The coolest thing is like we were very sensitive with like not having a gorilla pod bashing campaign. Okay, yeah, I'd love to talk about that. Because we could have just gone, guys, check out this gorilla pod. It's terrible. It takes 55 seconds to set up. Kind of go infomercial on it a little bit because usually in an infomercial they show all the like problems with something and 
personally, I know that would do well, but uh, that's also just not the kind of business or marketing that I wanted yeah, it's to do. It's not the do. kind of person I am or yeah. we are, it seems. So I was really adamant. I know we got advice and people are saying like, you have to show it against the other thing. And for me, at least to start the campaign in these first few days, I think there's only one photo or mention. We never mentioned Gorillapod by name. Mm -hmm. because we just, I don't think we need to. I think the product can stand on its own. That's what it is. And there's one picture that shows the thickness of the Gorilla Pod against the Switch Pod, just for scale, because people are looking at it online. They're like, how big is that thing? Actually, this is how big it is. It's next to the, the other product. It's the height of a penny. Yeah, it's the height of a penny. Not the width of a penny. Yeah, <laughs> that would be maybe version two. <laughs> That's for the... That's uh, like thinner than an iPhone. It's for the micro spy cameras. Micro Switch Pod. Uh, yeah, and you know what's funny is now everybody else is doing that campaign for us. That's an interesting thing because people people say things on the internet. I don't know if you know that. People say in comments or they'll make videos off of it and they'll say the marketing campaign, it's like they're saying it's a gorilla pod killer or RIP gorilla pod. No, we're not saying that. And we're not saying these things, but other people are 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 doing And that. part of that is I think comparison is strong like when i do a review of a camera or whatever like comparing it to other cameras is what people want because they're trying to make a buying decision they're yeah. like do i need this thing or can i use the one i have or which of these two things do i buy so comparison is like a helpful way to talk about a product and to review it and being controversial or saying like hey you have this thing this new thing is better like that is going to help those videos get views and that's going to help those people earn affiliate income and that sort of thing. So did you expect that? Partially. Yeah. I think there are going to be videos that are switch pod versus gorilla pod shortly. Oh, yeah. And there's shortcomings with the switch pod related to a lot of the great things about the gorilla pod, mm -hmm. like the flexibility on, on, uh, on level ground mm -hmm. and the ball head is, per, is, I love the Joby ball head. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's a little too, I, it works on ours. Yeah. It works perfectly. Yeah. Actually. And so like part of me wants to be like, this is a great product. Gorilla pod. Great. It's great for certain things like uneven surfaces, uh, wrapping around trees. Like it Which can, it does, can do some way. great things. Um, and ours does some great things too. own both. Like, yeah. Depending on what you're using it for own both. Like take the ball head from the gorilla pod and put it on top of a switch pod and then you have the ball head you want. And so I think that you can make things that kind of integrate into people's lives a little bit right. more. I think a big problem that entrepreneurs have is we try to add everything that solves every problem into one product. I am very familiar with many software companies who have tried to do that and have failed and have had to make adjustments because they do uh, everything average. And then I've seen physical products do something everything average and maybe the gorilla pod is that it's a decent of all those things and but it does all of them so and, if you want all of them great and w one thing that's powerful about that is being so versatile as a product your swiss army knife your swiss army knife the, which can sell a lot like swiss army knives sell a lot of units because right. they do a lot of things but is a swiss army knife the best scissor or no. the best cork or knife like or saw. kitchen knife. Or, Have you ever yeah. tried to saw something with a Swiss oh, Army it's knife? So frustrating. Like even a stick. It's like just when you're camping work very or well. something. Yeah. But I mean, it does it and it can help out, which is great. But we put our foot in the ground and said, okay, we know that we are like, yes, wrapping around a tree is cool. We aren't going to try to do that. We're not going to do that. We're yeah. not building for that. And that way we can maximize the quality of the experience with the other things that we think this would be used more for. Yeah. And those are decisions you have to make when you're like developing something is like, what, what are we going to do and what are we not going to do? And I think that we, there were so many points along the path oh, yeah. of making this is like, is it going to do this or is it going to do this? Like, is it going to be quiet when it closes or are the legs going to stay together? Cause this, this one here, this, uh, this silver one, that we had, this one's quiet when it closes because we have like padding in between to soften it, but um, you know, it doesn't have, I'm trying to get it in the mic. So it has padding in between here and it has padding here. So this is quiet. 
quieter. Um, but then the legs don't stay together. So if you just grab one, that just falls. And so that's not necessarily what you want. Um, yeah, that one pinched me. This one pinched times. you because yeah. you get your fingers caught in it. So yeah. like we've tried to do all the things that people are giving comments you about should right now. You should explore them. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, do we need it to bend? Do the legs need to get taller? Um, do we need to make our own ball head? The ball heads that are out there are great. We can put them right on top. Right. We don't want to be able to wrap around stuff. We. It doesn't matter if it's super silent to us. Function over some of the... The form things. Right. And and when you say we don't need it to, to wrap around, y you mean like video creators don't need that for the target demographic uh, and market that we're... Yeah, we're, it's like a percentage thing. So like... Some people wrap it around. Well, yeah, like if you are hiking on mountains or like you vlog in the forest and you like always are wrapping around trees or like you want it to do that, then maybe you need something that does that. But if you do that... 1% of the time, or if you've done it a few times with the product, like the sawing something with a Swiss army knife, mm -hmm. like, like if you're going to saw something, like get Dude. a saw. Every time somebody talks about the bendy thing now, oh, it doesn't bend around trees. I'm going to be like, well, do you actually saw a tree with the Swiss army knife that you own? Or I, I can come up with a better response, but like, that's a perfect analogy. Of like something that does everything or something that solves an individual problem. And I think that if you make something that is so specific, that helps very specific people, those people find it. And I think that's part of why this has gone so well mm -hmm. is if we just tried to make something like everything else, like more of a copy of something and not something that was focused to a specific person and a specific use. Yeah it would have been more vague. Like that's why things on Kickstarter that do really well are like uh, a coat that warms you, like a smart coat or something. It's like you don't launch a coat on Kickstarter. It has to be different. It has to do something different. It has to be like a modification and a new kind of way that someone uses it. And so other than board games, board games do amazingly well on we Kickstarter. We should do a too. board game. <laughs> we should switch our whole business model. Like mid campaign, be like, we're now offering a board game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your bonus is a board game, and the three legs on the tripod are like your starting points, and mm -hmm. you have to. This like, is all just a ploy so that Pat and I can have a board game. Yes. No. It would be called Never Bored Board Game Company. Never Bored Game. Never. Yeah. Any other thing about the campaign and like the hardest part in the first few days of like when you do something, it becomes successful or goes way better than you thought that would be an interesting thing to hear because for me i go to bed at like 10 if i'm if i'm up late and i was up till 2 a.m just like replying to people because normally i can get through my email and like instagram and twitter and like and, and then i can like put my phone down and chill at nighttime and that day was extremely overwhelming and still is i like have a lot of unread emails and DMs and things like that. And I just wanted to like reply to everybody because there was all this energy and I wanted to mm -hmm. reciprocate And you did a great that. job. And I, and I was trying to keep up on my end. I went home and I started to answer more questions and there was getting, I was getting a lot of personal emails from my audience and PR related things and, and other people. And you kind of have to weigh like, okay, which ones are important that I need to answer now? And there's like sometimes no way to know. The first day was really interesting. I was so happy that it went the way it did, um, not just because of the money that came in and the fact that we were fully funded, but what that actually means. Like this means we get to build this. Mm -hmm. My worry was that we were not going to build this. And we'd had debates about what should the funding goal be and if it's like if we were going to do 150 or 200 because that was really an internal goal of like, if we can get to 200 or so, then not only can we make it and break even, we'll have more inventory to keep selling. And so the fact that we're past that point is is interesting and fun. But, right. but the fact that we were like, no, let's set it a little lower, something that's attainable, because if it got to 140 and we set our goal at 150 and then we didn't get any of the money because that's how the crowdfunding platforms work is you have to reach your goal. At mm -hmm. least that's how Kickstarter works. 
And so we lowered it to 100. Like, and that part of that's out of fear, like not thinking we can do it, but it's also an unknown of, I have no idea how this is going to do or resonate with people because no one had paid a dollar to us yet. Just conversations, just excitement, right. just followers and comments and tweets. It was like until the first person put their dollar down and we got 10,000 funded in 20 minutes, it was like, okay, okay. I think we would have been fine. Yeah. I think we could have done a higher goal. But it's also cool to reach reach a goal quickly, and now we can start thinking about the next steps. Yeah, I mean, Kickstarter and marketing, I think it was smart that we went down to 100 um, specifically f- for the marketing of it. We can say we had a six-figure Kickstarter launch completely funded in one day. And that, like, not everybody can say that. Yeah. And that that's a headline, right? But... I'm excited about what's coming next because now that we have 57 days left, 58 days left, the additional money that comes in means uh, more opportunities for cooler things. And I'm already, I'm already thinking about, and I know this is a problem. My wife would attest to this. I, I, I think about new things before this, the before things right now are mm-hmm. finished, even. Mm-hmm. And I have to know, I have to slow down. I think, I think, thankfully, I've been doing a lot of meditation this year already and it's allowing me to in the mornings and in the evenings between all this craziness to really focus in in the present moment and just be super thankful and grateful and proud of everything and uh just be present and i think that i want to make sure it's not like my wedding day where it was just everything was happening so fast and then at the end of the day the the, la- the only thing i remember from that day was like when me and April were just finally alone at the end of the wedding because we were going table to table and all these pictures and stuff. We were shots. so exhausted. Met too many shots, <laughs> photography shots. Yeah. And then I remembered the day and I want to be present during this whole pe- this whole period. And um, I still want to be forward thinking and excited about what could come out of this though. Should we have hired your wedding videographer to document Ter- this? No, dude. <laughs> We'll have to save that story for another day. Your wedding video? We paid him 500 bucks off of Craigslist because we wanted the photography to be great. But we mm-hmm. were like, oh, last minute, let's get a video. Uh, so we met this person and, you know, we paid him 500 bucks and he came with like a, it, it was like a handheld camera, like you might see at a family reunion mm-hmm. from your uncle or something. And he was like the creepiest dude. But here's the craziest part. I guess we're telling this story now. <laughs> we watched the video. After a couple of weeks, we get it back. And it's, it's not good quality at all. It's like home video quality because it's like a eight, whatever. Uh, but the, the craziest part was at the end when he was filming the party, he decided to go slow-mo. So we're dancing at the party, disco lights, slow-mo, people smiling, focused on me in April. But then here's the song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's like a funeral song. I know, I'm sorry. I know. I was expecting to see like RIP, like in the some dates there, but it actually said something like Pat and April Flynn, and then our our the the wedding date. So I was like, wait, like wh- why does it sound like something just died? <laughs> That's a sad song I to guess, play in a wedding video yeah, for sure. It was really weird. So if you want great video at your <laughs> wedding, you get what you pay for. Yeah, you got a five hundred dollar video. But I also got a $500 amazing story that is still being told 10 years yeah, later. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I wish that video was public so we could link to it, but I won't I won't share it anywhere. Uh, we have like so many Filipino aunties because I'm half Filipino. My wife is Filipina. Like three quarters of the video is, babies, you ready for baby when you ha- when your baby's coming? Oh, just everyone like, asking you to yeah, get pregnant? Yeah, so when are you going to have a baby? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't even know where to go from there. I don't know. I think we just... We're just excited about creating switch pods, hopefully giving them to wedding video people to do a better seeing job it in than public, yours. Yeah. Seeing it in public. I'm, I'm so excited to see it in public from somebody I don't know, going up to that person and going, hey. What is that? What did, where'd you get that? <laughs> I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah. I think it'll be fun to go to conferences or go to events and have people using switch pods and that sort of thing. And, um, I'm not going to be like, Oh, I invented that or, you know, be, be weird about not it. Not ever. You're not going to ever do that. No. I mean, if someone asks or like, wait, didn't you invent this? Or I don't know, that'd be something fun at some point, but 
I think I've never made a physical product before. So having them, there'll be milestones of like seeing someone using it that I don't know, um, seeing it in a store maybe mm-hmm. eventually or what have you, like those types of things. I sat cool. next to somebody at the airport or across from somebody who was reading Will It Fly, my book. And I had this like hour long. Did you long, say anything? No, I didn't. I didn't. And I don't know if she saw me or not, but I wanted to say, but I didn't want to be like, hey, I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, like, it was a surreal moment seeing it in, in real life like yeah. that in the wild. Yeah. That, I'm going to walk up to people and be like, I thought of that. Switch pod? Nah, this is a knockoff. <laughs> uh, that's another discussion oh, for yeah. another time. It, of like it may happen. Protecting your products and copyright and all of that kind of thing. But um, yeah, just excited for, I mean, it's been a couple days. Maybe we'll talk again on the podcast soon to just see where this thing goes. And I want to do a better job in general of just documenting and sharing the the process of things in general, because I'm like a Polish person of like Polish. Polish. Well, I'm 50% Polish, but I also like to have things be polished when I publish them (laughs) is what I meant. And so showing like raw things of like, even the vlog we showed from launch day, editing it. And I was like, Oh, you can see the cores behind my computer. And like, that's what I think about. Like, really? Yeah. Like I care so much about for the cords. I just care so much about like, if something's perfectly straight or if it's like everything's in its place. And so showing the behind the scenes, I love that. I love when I'm watching something and something they, they cut to the behind the scenes angle and I pause it because I want to see like, where do they put the lights? Like what cameras are they using? All that kind and of stuff. And you're not get, giving anybody And I don't give that to people. Yeah. So I think sharing some of that, being open about things, if something happens with the switch pod manufacturing process and if something goes wrong, I want to be open and honest about it and share about it. Well, we so, have to be with our backers or else we might get in trouble. Right, exactly. <laughs> so just staying on top of that, being being transparent, I think. Even me going into comments of videos that have 20 views that are talking about SwitchPod or going really deep into Peter McKinnon's video and his comments and replying to what people are saying or critiquing about the video or saying like how we're doing something marketing-wise or that we're like shilling product and stuff like that and being like just like having a genuine conversation with people like some of the responses i've gotten from people on twitter is like dude i'm gonna back your project now just because of like how you responded to my comment that's or cool, my man. video that's so or cool. something so i think just being a human and doing things that don't always make you the most money like me going and commenting on people in in youtube is probably not the best way for this campaign to do really well but just trying to be a person. I mean, people want to connect with people these days. And there's a lot of big companies out there who you don't even know anybody's names who work there. Yet you use their stuff every day. And we're trying to be regular people just like you who had an idea and we executed. Let's, we're all on the same team. Mm-hmm. It is hard as a company, like as a brand to to be that. And so I think that's one of our advantages is we are two people that created this thing with help from a lot of other people and people helping make the product, manufacture it, share it with their audiences, all that kind of stuff. But that's part of like Kickstarter is like, these people had an idea. They are making this thing. They actually need your help. They need your funding to make it. Um, That's just a cool part of doing this, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, super thankful to be a part of this with you and I couldn't have ask for a better, uh, more hardworking partner. And I think we each have our own strengths to bring to the situation. And, you know, just so everybody knows, like you and Jen put the Kickstarter page together. I did not touch any of that. And that was a huge thing. And then certain influencer relationships kind of, I started, but then we've kind of worked on this together. And so we each are bringing things to the table based on kind of our superpowers. I would have not been able to create a Kickstarter page like that. Like just, I would not have been able to do that. And you have your video superpowers, your photography superpowers, and I have a large audience and, and, and leveraging that. And I have connections and people who know people who know people. So I've been working those relationships. Yeah, for sure. Like getting getting a chance to have a conversation with a certain person at a conference 
to help us just like talk through something or get feedback before we launch or yeah, getting an introduction to an influencer. Those are like intangible things that are brought to the table too. So it's just been fun to work with other people on this um, internally with you and I and Jen and Tim on my team and the product people, Cole, T, Jace, Richie, Mm -hmm. the four of them. And like, it's just been fun to work on something collaborative because a lot of what I do is solo. And a lot of the work I do is I sit at my desk at home by myself and I do my work. (laughs) And so it's fun to just do something collaborative and to share it and see such a response on the internet. And I'm excited to go to conferences and events and people like coming up and talking about the launch of SwitchPod and the congratulations and the campaign and things like that. Because we have like... 2300 2400 people that have voted with their dollars which is which is it's awesome. unreal it's yeah. absolutely unreal i'm excited to give back in some way if if you know i'm already uh slated to speak at my son's school and we're going to be talking about the switch pod and how the whole idea because they're actually working on their own businesses too and it like Part of my happiness when we got funded was, yes, I can actually tell the kids that we actually are going to make this. And mm-hmm. uh, that that's exciting. I, I'm excited for you and I to be on stages at some point to talk about this story and the journey and how big this company gets or how great the company is or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm excited for the future. Me too. And uh, 57 and a half days to go on the campaign and we'll see. We'll see how it ends up. I have no idea. There is this plugin for Kickstarter called Kick Tracker, uh, and uh, it's a Google Chrome extension where it shows a chart on top of your Kickstarter page of where it thinks it's going to go. Um, the last time I looked, maybe I'm just going to pull it up live here right now. It says 4.6 million is what we're trending. Towards. It's going up. The highest it's ever been was like five or six million. Oh, okay, but. That still blows my mind. If we end up at 4.6 million, that is tens of thousands of switch pods. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That's incredible. They better come off the line properly. That's all I'm thinking <laughs> about right now. <laughs> we don't. Does anybody want to buy 20,000 flawed switch pods? Because that's what we have. Dude, we're Maybe gonna... we'll, they'll get lost at sea. Or maybe we we bury them just like Like the ET ET cartridges for Atari. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then 20, 30 years later, someone can go find them, do a documentary. Right. Make a story about it. Exactly. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully it goes a little better. No. No. Well, thank you, Pat, for joining me on the show. Thanks Um, for having me. Yeah. Congrats on the new podcast. And I'm stoked for the future episodes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And definitely go check out Smart Passive Income if you're looking to start a business online, start a podcast, especially is a lot of great resources there. And uh, our conversation on his show, Smart Passive Income Podcast 356 is uh, where we talked about stuff before the launch, before it was going this well. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of, well, we'll, we'll see, see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> that episode title should just be called We'll See. And this one's called like, what do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> We have to eat now. We have to eat now. Yes. All right. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, man. If you want to learn more about Pat, go to smartpassiveincome.com. It's a great podcast there. Over 350 episodes deep. We have done a few podcast episodes over on that one before. The most recent one is episode 356 of the SPI podcast, where we recorded before the Kickstarter campaign launched. So definitely check that out. And if you want to check out more about SwitchPod, you can go to switchpod.co. If you're listening to this in February or March of 2019, the Kickstarter campaign page will be live and you can pre-order yours there. If you're listening to this after the fact, that's going to redirect you somewhere else, probably to some other place that you can pick up yours as well. I've been Caleb Wadrick. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.